Along with all of you adventurous spirits, we have been discovering Wisconsin for 35 years. And to think it all started in a fishing boat with my dad, Dick Rose. Over the 34 years, we've discovered all 72 counties countless times. And we have a lot more in store for you this season. So stay tuned. I'm going on a vacation up in the Chippewa Flowage outside of Hayward. The visitors and the resort owners up here have a commonality on being generational. Here is a place of peace, of recreation, of storytelling with your friends. I'm so excited to experience the flowage and bring you along with me. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. So up here in Hayward on the Chippewa Flowage, there's so much to do all year round. So I'm gonna check out boating and UTVing, but those are in different seasons. Right now it's winter, I'm enjoying the fire right now, but I'm about to go on the ice, do a little snowmobiling on the extensive trail system here. Up in Hayward, Wisconsin is Lake Chippewa Flowage, whose shorelines have cozy resorts for your northern getaway, as well as wild trails for motorsport endeavors. Snowmobilers have access to over 600 miles of groomed trails besides the lake. Even when there isn't much snow out on the trails, you can always get out on the Chippewa Flowage for a ride. Brad Sanderson of Johnson's Resort tells us about snowmobiling the flowage and how he grew up riding. Right now we're at Treeland Resorts on the Chippewa Flowage. We're getting ready to go for a ride out on starting at Muskie Bay here. I've been snowmobiling all my life. We started as a kid snowmobiling as a family back in Minnesota and mom and dad got us into it and we lived out in the country. We snowmobiled through the woods and eventually moved here to Hayward and just loved the sport. Pretty much snowmobiled every day all winter long. On land, there are 23 miles of trails directly around the flowage that then provide access to hundreds of connecting trails. These then lead you to places like Park Falls, Rice Lake, and more. I'm gonna to talk to Alex about the trail system around the flowage and the tips he has for me. Alex's family has owned the Shady Nook Resort for decades, and he's the latest installment to their family legacy. This is a common trait to find at these resorts because people can't help but come back to this great escape up north. So you grew up around here. I mean, you literally grew up here. Yes, this is my stomping ground. My grandfather and grandmother moved up here in 1960 from Chicago, and uh, it's been in my family ever since. It's still very much a uh, completely family-run operation here. So Alex, you obviously love ATV and UTV riding. Describe the experience. Well, it's just kind of nice to get out in the open woods. It's a little bit more faster paced than like hiking or whatnot. If you want to get out, see some wildlife, get a drink, and eat some food somewhere, it's a great uh, activity to go out and do. There's so many woods around here. Looks like there's a lot of trails. We're very lucky. Everything goes through right down the middle of the flowage, so you get to see all the bars and restaurants down there. It goes both ways around the bottom end of the flowage. One through the tribal forest and one through the national forest. And then there's so many nooks and crannies here. And that's the beautiful part of the lake and the area. There's so many small hidden places to explore. You started riding UTVs at a young age. Yes. What are your tips for other people who are just starting to experience UTVs? Go your own speed. You don't need to try to keep up with anybody or anything like that. Also, when you're going out, you know your destination. So if you do get separated, everybody knows where they're going. Wear a helmet, uh, seat belt, don't drink and drive. So I did my hair for nothing? <laughs> in the summertime, speed boats and pontoons are kicking up waves on the water. And I'm in vacation mode, complete with sunglasses and windblown silver locks. There are plenty of stops along the flowage where you can grab a drink, an ice cream, or a meal at one of the resorts. This is our third summer. I myself have been coming up here my whole life, vacationing with parents and relatives. My husband and I got married 25 years ago, started vacationing up here with him, and as our family grew, we vacationed with our son. And you have people who come back here year after year, and it seems like generation after generation now. We are seeing kids now renting our cabins that used to be this big when they first started coming here. You get to know a lot of people. It's nice to see the change of every week. What about the Chippewa Flowage is so personal to you? Just the solitude. 
Even during a busy time, you can find a hidden cove somewhere. It's natural. You can get lost out there still. What are some of the top things to do around here this time of year? This time of year, you see a lot of tubers, fishermen, skiers, ice cream, of course. Who doesn't like ice cream in the summer? Just enjoy the water. There's one thing I would change about that. I like ice cream. All of this is made possible by the dam that was created to generate hydropower. This dam then created these shorelines, and now we're left with the flowage. Congratulations, Discover Wisconsin! 35 years, that's absolutely incredible. Cheers to you guys. Hey there, back for more? I can't wait to show you more of Lake Chippewa Flowage here on Discover Wisconsin. Shh, I'm listening. What you find up here is beautiful silence and peace across the water and land. In the wintertime, you can keep active with silent sports like ice fishing and cross-country skiing the flowage and trail system. At the Landing Resort, there are powwow events in the summer that welcome spectators. Becky Taylor shares with us how these dances are about their connection to nature along the beautiful backdrop of the sun setting on the water behind the dancers. I've been the coordinator to create this beautiful woodland dance youth troupe at our beautiful landing resort here on the heart of Chippewa Flowage. Being able to do our woodland dances representing Mother Nature and the respect of that is very educational showing that respect and those values and those teachings from my ancestors, my elders that taught me and showed me, and be those role models to teach those young ones behind me to do those same things. It means so much. To have those songs being sung and honored for the veterans, it's a powerful feeling when you dance for loved ones that might also be in the hospitals the veterans' homes, the nursing homes. They just might need those prayers. And then the beauty of the nature, when you're doing the swan dance, all the birds come out around us and the boats now have docked. The song just travels across the water. It will stay in your hearts when you leave. A wonderful opportunity to have this in the summer, like a cultural camp of dance to where our vendors come and bring their items that are all homemade from the birch bark, from the beadwork, and to just have a good time with our families that come from a long ways and have our children be proud of who they are when they're wearing their beautiful regalia and showing that off with their styles, it just means so much. You hear that? Of course you don't. We're in the middle of the North Woods. As dusk settles, the lake is like glass here on the Chippewa Flowage. It's an absolutely beautiful place to get away from it all. I want to whisper because I don't want to bother the fish. But it's a clear night. As you can see, the colors are brilliant as the sun's gone down, and we're getting ready to do a little stargazing. Now, there are tons of stars out here, but it's also going to be bright up there because we have a super moon tonight. There's only four in a year, and it's the buck moon tonight coincides with about the time of year here in July when the bucks start sprouting their antlers. So it's all about the seasons, it's all about the nature, and it's gonna be all about the stars and the moon tonight. The current is pushing and pulling me along this morning as I breeze along the water through shallow bays to the wide open stretches of the flowage, hearing the loons and critters during my morning workout. The vast awe for this Northwoods paradise is best understood from the sky as the eagles do, as they fly over the water and trees amongst a never-ending forest. So fishing one of the big popular draws here, but really all of the recreational opportunities in all of the seasons. It seems like people will come here for a huge variety of activities. There is, it's a wonderful place for silent sports. Uh, my wife Brenda and I love kayaking. I think it's the best kayak place in the state of Wisconsin because you can go out and there's so many nooks and crannies and hidden bays and channels and you think you're the only people on earth when you go into some of these places. Mm -hmm. It's very peaceful, very beautiful. You know, we want to share this with everybody.
Wherever I'm here, I'm steps away from a trail. Just me, the crunch of leaves, snaps of twigs, and wildlife scuttling to accompany me. Careful not to get too lulled into the solitude, or you could get turned around amongst all this abundant wilderness. Make sure to check out the behind the scenes segment in the Cabin Podcast for this episode of Discover Wisconsin. Coming up next, we'll see some family traditions around the flowage. Families return year after year for their lake vacation up here at the flowage. Some even end up becoming resort owners. The memories that these parents and siblings make are priceless which keeps them eager for more time together in this place of solitude and recreation. One thing that is for sure is that things are generational up here, from visits on vacation to the owners running the resorts themselves, with some being multi-generational business owners. So we run the Todd Strip once a week during the summer for the kids around the resort, probably 35 years now. I the kids out on the pontoon with cane poles and worms and catch a bunch of panfish sometimes other fish. <laughs> During the Todd's fishing trip, a boat is loaded up with parents and youngsters where each is handed a pole with a line and a hook. It's then up to them to catch a fish, which they often do. Anchored in a shallow bay, the kids catch and release fish that are a few inches long back into the water. So I'm fourth generation at the resort. I started going on the fishing trip as a kid, fishing on it before working on it. Me being fourth generation, a lot of the guests that come back are multi-generation. Their parents have done it, grandparents. It's just kind of fun seeing everyone year to year, watching them grow, watching them make new memories. Some hook their own worm and shine in pride. Others ask for assistance from the fishing guides with them and then eagerly wait for their next prized catch. We've had a couple of times on the Tots trip where a kid has hooked a bluegill and will bring it in and a musky or a large northern will come up and eat it. We'll have to get a lot of kids off the dock that'll catch big predator fish like your musky, northern, walleye randomly and it's all just fun watch all the excitement. Parents come running, it's pretty fun. The flowage is full of islands, over 100. Island camping on the north half of the lake is first come, first served. The islands on the southern half of the lake are part of the LCO reservation, while the rest are DNR land. One of the cool things about the Chippewa flowage is there's over 140 islands in the waters, which means there's hundreds of miles of shoreline you can enjoy, and a lot of places where you can camp. Some of the islands are named, some are not. Now the ones that are named, are named generally after something that happened on the island. We have a ghost island, we have a chipmunk island, we have all kinds of islands, and we have a number of unnamed islands where something has yet to happen, including the one we're standing on now. But with these guys camping, there might be a name by the time they're done. I'm gonna go see a group that's out camping. They were intrigued by how the largest muskie was caught up here at the Chippewa Flowage and wanted to see if they could reel in some for themselves. So Griffin, why did you choose the Chippewa Flowage for camping? Oh, I wanted to get like away from society. There's no reception, no electronics. It gives everybody a break. And we knew the world record muskie was got here. Might as well give it a try. I mean, you have hundreds of miles of shoreline across yeah. these islands. How'd you get to this particular island? It's really cool. We know this is the biggest one they had. And when we first tested out this island, we saw there was deer on the island. So we thought it'd be pretty cool to be able to explore with like the wildlife. A lot of times at night before we go to bed, you can see the sunset very well. All the water, it shines, it's pink. Early sunset, it's a nice bright orange. The water's still. In the distance, you can either hear the loons or the elk, the leaves in the wind, and smell the campfire. So what's your favorite experience been so far? Catching the 17 to 20 pound catfish and actually seeing the pole be bending. So you know you're gonna eat today. Yeah. And it's not gonna be those granola bars you know nope. as a backup. No, nope, it won't All be. Right. A hop and a skip from the flowage is downtown Hayward. Visitors can check out downtown Hayward, which is adjacent to the Chippewa Flowage Resorts. There's a plethora of candy shops. Holy crap, this is good. A record shop. And more. 
I'm going to visit the Lumberjack Show in town, where professionals chop wood at record speeds, climb trees taller than telephone poles, throw axes, and wield chainsaws. Time to learn more about this lake straight from an expert fishing guide on Discover Wisconsin. The lake, the reason for it all. Fed by the Chippewa River, the Chippewa Flowage covers 15,000 acres and came into existence in 1923. I'm going to see John, who's a fishing guide, who will tell me about the lake's indigenous history. When I'm driving to my next fishing spot, I'm thinking about the people that lived here before the flood. In some cases, I might be driving over their house or their farm or over the old roadbed. There's a lot beneath the surface that tells a tale of the people that were here. There's seven bands of the Ojibwa Nation. Our band is the Lacoudere tribe of the Ojibwe. Originally, they came from the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and they worked their way up through the Great Lakes, settled on Madeline Island on La Pointe, and then they allied themselves with the Mate, which would be French Canadian, Indian mixed blood. They eventually started penetrating into northern Wisconsin and exploring. That goes back to probably mid to late 1700s. At that time, a number of villages sprang up. Lumberjacks or traders or trappers, all races of people, all nationalities, I should say, married into the Ojibwa tribe, and they all shared their own cultures, recipes, and crafts. They all worked together and all lived as one. You know, the only way you could survive is if you worked together. Give me the background and the history of Indian Trails Resort. I love the bar we're standing in right now. The original building that was here was built in the 1870s, most likely, as an Indian homestead cabin. And the entire cabin is still fully intact, all four walls of the cabin. One wall that's partially exposed and visible. Probably the last surviving residence of the old village of Pequeawang. This was built in the war right after the guys came back from the service. And it's all stone walls and logs, and it's beautifully done. We try to preserve the flavor of the old family fishing resorts of the 40s and 50s. It's like a time machine. When I started as a teenager, I hired a lot of guides myself. A buddy of mine and I would hire out a guide, and it was a great learning experience, especially at that time when there was so much to learn when I was just starting out. We learned so much, we realized we have to do this every year. It's actually more important to learn tips from a guide than it is to catch fish with a guide. So the guides that we have are very professional, very knowledgeable. Some guides specialize in muskies, others specialize in walleye or panfish. Some of them are multifaceted and they fish for everything. So it depends on what you're looking for. It often becomes an annual thing. They realize how much there is to learn, how enjoyable it is. And you get all the stories from the guides too. The full fish stories, things like that, right? Actually, our fish are so big here that you don't need to exaggerate them, so it's, uh, All right. we're lucky to have what we have here. There are so many fish in these waters, not to mention all the floating bogs that drift from place to place, to the dozens of islands, to the array of wildlife that cover these lands. So we just went through that big puddle. This guy, look at this. Wipes it down, looks like it's fresh out of the car wash. I mean, really? Come on. Whole point is to get dirty. 